All right, people, I am going to start this. And some of you know if you're speaking. So let's come on into this tent. First dibs on, sh on shade in the tent, if you really want that. It might be important to you. <laughs> All right. Everyone's coming in. All right, so welcome, welcome everybody to the long awaited Scott Water Farm event. What a great setting, what great weather. I'm Drew Bartlett, Executive Director for the South Florida Water Management District, and I'm happy to host this event for us today. What a great way to end a week. It's been kind of a boring week for me, and so I'm glad to have this event here today. So I want to introduce some of our board members from the South Florida Water Management District. Of course, we have Ben Butler, who will say a few words shortly, Charlotte Roman from uh, Marco Island on the West Coast. You have Jackie Thurlow Lippish from the East Coast. And there, oh, there you are, Cheryl Meads from the Keys. She knows the importance of water forms. We also have Representative Toby o Overdorf here who will be speaking. Uh, then we have uh, Indian River County Commissioner Joe Earman. There he is. We have Laura Moss, Commissioner from Indian River County. Sean Mitchell from St. Lucie County. Hey, Sean. We have Carson Turner from the 16 County Coalition. Very shy guy if you know him. We have Mike Register from the St. John's River Water Management District, which is where we're standing, actually. We have, he's the executive director, newly, newly appointed. Well, you to go, Mike. Uh, Doug Bornique from the uh, St. John's River Water Management District, longtime Indian River County, longtime supporter of this project. We have David Hazely from Okeechobee County. There you are, David. The other side of Scott Water Farm is in Okeechobee County. Uh, and then we have Adam Blaylock from Deputy Secretary from Department of Environmental Protection. Did I miss anybody? Any other officials here? Okay, very good. Welcome, everybody. Uh, let's get started on this thing. This, this project has been long awaited. You'll hear people talk about that. But Governor DeSantis, when he took office, he gave us 28 priority projects and said, let's get these things done. This was one of those. And so it is great to get that done on his first term. Uh, he has fought for, re for money for our water resources. If things happen right this, this year, he will have gotten $3 billion during his first term for our water resources. Can't thank him enough. It's a great opportunity for me. So let's get started. First, I'd like to introduce Adam Blaylock, Deputy Secretary uh, for the Department of Environmental Protection. He runs the Ecosystem Restoration Program. Adam. All right. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Yeah, any uh, opportunity I can get to be out of Tallahassee in February, I'm definitely going to uh, take that. So it's really good to be here to see this in person and uh, to be here with all of you. Just under half of Florida's east coast is occupied by the Indian River Lagoon. It's one of the largest and most cherished natural resources found across the state. In the southern portion of the lagoon's footprint, we have the St. Lucie Estuary, an important watershed that is a driving factor in the health and quality of life surrounding communities and ecosystems. Together, they cultivate biodiversity found in one of Florida's most unique coastal regions. Protecting water quality has been a primary focus of Governor DeSantis over the last three years, along with the South Florida Water Management District, DEP, and many of the state leaders around the state, the state environmental leaders in the state. And as you know, Indian River Lagoon has been greatly important from a policy perspective on water quality as we've looked at wastewater grant program to increase funding for septic to sewer and also projects like this. These public-private partnerships are very important to the overall restoration of Indian River Lagoon, Lake Okeechobee, the Everglades, and it's partnerships like this that really make that possible. This water project is going to do tremendous benefit from a nutrient reduction 
and we're very happy for the success that this is going to bring and for that reduction in water in nutrients and improvement of water quality. So just want to thank everybody who was involved from the department, state agencies, environmental groups, other stakeholders, and of course the uh, property owners and everybody involved with this. So thank you very much and uh, appreciate it. Thank you, Adam, and thank you and Sean Hamilton, the secretary, for your immense support for our water resources. Next, we have the board member for the, for the Okeechobee County area uh, from the South Florida Water Management District, a uh, great friend of mine, Ben Butler. Thank you, Drew. Yep, not much going on this week. Um, well, to begin with, thank y'all. Thank everyone for being here to help celebrate this. This is uh, another special event today, and um, and I do. I have the serve I have the privilege of serving on the governing board for the South Florida Water Management District. Privilege of serving other eight other great board members that I respect, and uh, we're all there for the right reasons. So it's um, it's it's quite an honor to get to serve there, and it's quite an honor again to be here today to help cut the ribbon. We've had a lot of ribbon cuttings, and these are good things for our environment. Drew said 28 projects. We've had 43 projects that we have either cut the ribbon on, substantial, made a substantial milestone on, or we broke ground on here under the Governor DeSantis administration. The Bluefield Grove Water Project is another one of those projects, and um, as a former citrus operation, this is um, another way of farming. And um, this is, uh, to me, this is, uh, this is a great thing to see. We need projects, we need more projects like this. Today, the 29,000 acre feet of water that we will be able to store here, um, I get in my talking points here, that's nine billion gallons. I have no frame of reference of nine billion gallons. I was talking to Miss Elskin earlier. Um, I equate everything to Lake Okeechobee. Mitnick and I will argue over this. 29,000 acre feet. I'm going to call it seven eighths of an inch equivalent off of Lake Okeechobee. Mitnick's going to tell you three quarters of an inch probably, but uh, I'm going to go with the seven eighths of an inch equivalent. That's how I think about this. Seven eighths equivalent of water off of Lake Okeechobee. Now, granted, this water doesn't go to Lake Okeechobee. This is local basin runoff out of the C25, but this water doesn't go to Taylor Creek. It doesn't go out the C24. It doesn't go out the C23. It doesn't hit the coast where we've had so many of our problems. This water stays right here on the basin, recharges the aquifer, and does the things that we needed to do. I've said it, but I'll say it again. I want to thank Governor DeSantis for his prioritizing of these projects. And again, it's all part of the effort to do more now for the Everglades and Everglades restoration, our environment and our water quality. I also want to take the opportunity to thank our Florida legislature for their generous support. This project wouldn't happen without their support. The money for this project comes from our legislature, and I want to thank them for that. In addition, I'm going to take the opportunity. I've said it a couple times. I'm going to say it again. Um, I'm going to thank the legislature for the confirmation. Confirmation of Ms. Meads, confirmation of Colonel Roman, and myself here last week. Um, it allows us to continue working, doing the good work of the South Florida Water Management District. Every year we get 50 plus inches of rain. And in the state of Florida, we're used to that. But as we begin to, as the state of Florida, we begin to add more and more people every day. Along with that comes rooftops, concrete, and asphalt. And we lose places for that water to percolate back into the aquifer. These projects can help prevent that. These projects can happen in half the time that a public project can happen. And that's what makes these public-private partnerships so important. We want to get something done now. It's these projects that make it happen. So again, legislature, thank you for the support for this project. I want to take the opportunity here to thank all the staff and the construction crew that helped to get this thing done, get it done on time. I wish we could have been here and broke ground on it or broke the, cut the ribbon on it a couple months ago because that's when it was actually up and going. Weather, Mother Nature kind of prevented us from doing that. But we're here today, and I look forward to eventually cutting the, 
cutting the ribbon on this, along with all our other great partners that have helped make this happen. FDAX, DEP, the Florida Legislature, local county governments. Thank you all for your support. Thank you. Thank you, Ben, and, and, and other South Florida Water Man Management District board members. I'd like to introduce you to Jody Hutchins, who is our staff member who made this happen. Where are you, Jody? There she is. <laughs> HM knows her very well. All right. This can't be done without appropriators, so let's introduce our favorite appropriator, Toby Overdorf. Thank you, Toby. Well, thank you very much for having me here today. Um, first, I want to say, Drew, it's not my fault that you were in Tallahassee. <clears throat> anyway, in years past, the land uh, that would have that we see today would have recently been flooded, but not for storage. It would have been flooded today for the preservation of citrus trees and the protection of the recent cold snaps that have come to this part of Florida. Well, as we all know, once citrus canker and greening hit this area, the folks that owned at Evans property and so many like them had to find new opportunities and to find a new path away from the industry that they've known for over 50 years. While some in their position chose development, the Evans family, under the direction of one of the smartest men I've ever known, Rod Edwards, chose a different path. They chose water. Truth be told, the water, the water path hasn't been easy. Countless meetings, phone calls, permit application, Request for additional information, request for additional information, request for additional information, legislative appropriation requests, trips to West Palm, trips to Jacksonville, trips to Tallahassee, trips to D.C. They've all led to today's ribbons cutting. By the way, um, H.M. wants to thank all of you for the Marriott nights and for the various frequent flyer miles that he's been able to rack up. Appreciate that. As many of you know, the, this project stores 29,000 acre of water feet per year. So Ben, to put it in perspective, that's 4.9 feet of discharge across the entire city of Stewart. In other words, Jackie would be walking around like this the whole time to make sure her head's out of. So when combined with, with the other recent addition, Bluefield Water Farm, Evans Properties and their relationship with the Water Management District will hold back 17.8 billion gallons of water that will never, ever, never, ever, ever see our precious Indian River Lagoon. Leonardo da Vinci once said that water is the driving force of all nature. In the case of discharges, that dri driving force can actually be destructive. However, we recognize that today, that driving force will be captured and stored within 7,444 acres. That driving force, that water will instead enhance the regional nature, will enhance our drinking water preserves, reserves, excuse me, will enhance the opportunities for carbon sequestration, and will truly be a positive driving force for nature's preservation. On behalf of the Florida legislature, the good people of Florida, Governor Ron DeSantis, I want to say thank you to Evans Properties, thank you to South Florida Water Management District, and thank you to the Florida taxpayers that funded this incredible opportunity that opens today and will truly be a driving force of nature. Thank you. Thank you, Representative. Now I'd like to welcome uh, David Hazelleaf, Vice Chair of Oco Okeechobee County, where this project is partially located. Thank you, David. Thank you, Drew. Appreciate this opportunity to be here. It makes me think about October when you brought the entire board to Okeechobee. And as Miss Libby said, it takes a big event to put that show on the road. So it takes a lot of people and we appreciate you doing that. And you're welcome back in Okeechobee at any time. Thanks to all the board members that came and we hope we treated you in so many ways that you like some of them. <laughs> <So>. <laughs> You know, but, you know, in September, you know, we celebrated the the opening of the S nineteen S one ninety one A. You know, that was a big event for Okeechobee, and, and Ben mentioned that a lot of the other ones that happened. But but today we're here to do the Scott Water Farm, and I have to tell you, it's been a long time since I've been on this side of the turnpike, uh, the other side several times. But it was in the '60s my family bought the cattle off for this. It was a, it was a cattle ranch, and we bought the cattle and hauled them under the turnpike and carried them back. So things have changed a lot 
So, but I want to thank you know South Florida Water Management District, the um, Department of Agriculture and Consumer Ser Consumer Services, the DEP, and everyone at uh, Evans Properties and their crew. I see some, some of them back here really worked hard on this project, and we appreciate it. The Scott Water Farm is going to be a big contributor to taking phosphorus off. That's what we're doing. Okeechobee right now, we're working on sewer to sep septic to sewer to try to do the same thing. And we have a lot of other projects on the west side of Okeechobee that, uh, that, that drew you and the board have, have uh, so graciously said you would consider doing. We appreciate that. And um, to reduce the nitrogen and the phosphorus, that is our goal. So... A lot of water projects are already located in Okeechobee. Uh, ben, uh, some of them out we're close to your to your place, some of them north of town. They are doing a lot of good to reduce the load that goes into the lake. That is a, that is a big thing for Okeechobee. The tourism is, is a second in Okeechobee to the uh, agriculture. And I'm here to, to say that uh, because that we're doing these good things, we still have Bass Pro AKA Big Cedar Lodge, you know, uh, we, the uh, Lieutenant Colonel apologized to me this week because we're going to be March and getting the clearance instead of February, but it's very much a go and it's going to be great for Okeechobee. So thank you for having me here and, and uh, appreciate everything that's going on. Thank you, Commissioner. Now the other half of Scott Water Farm uh, is in Indian River County, so Joe Earman is here to welcome you. Thank you everyone for being here, and it would have been proper if I didn't welcome you to Indian River County, because there's probably not that many Indian River County people here. There's a few of us, but not many. I'm sorry we're not at the beach and you're not all having a nice cool pina colada or something like that, but this is about actually about as good as it, as it really gets. If This is what it's all about. These projects are, are what they're all about. And First thing, Drew, I want to thank thank you for, for having me here and having Indian River County be a part of this project. And and uh, also I want to recognize you and all your, all your group for putting this together. I know it was a big deal and a big project and a lot of work. And a, and, a, and a lot of effort, and, 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 and as, as an Indian River County resident, as a fisherman, as an enjoyer of, of recreation on the Indian River Lagoon, and as the county commissioner, I, I sincerely want to let you know I appreciate it, and we do and, and appreciate Indian River County. I also want to recognize my fellow commissioner is also here, Commissioner Moss. She's District 5 representative. She's here, and I appreciate her support for being here with us also. I also want to thank our, our folks from, from our water management district, Mike Register with the St. John's R River Water Management District, and our commissioner and longtime Indian River County resident and Citrus uh, official, Doug Bernick. Um Doug and I could tell you some stories of, of, about this area. If you, if you looked all that way, imagine uh, Doug 10, 15 years ago, 25 years ago, as far as you could see, you'd see nothing but grapefruit trees out here. The, the prettiest and most beautiful grapefruit trees you could imagine. This was the grapefruit capital of the world. And uh, it was just a, a bustling and busy place out here. Well, obviously, with, with greening and, and that sort of stuff and, and canker and all the stuff, it took its toll in the industry. And so I think Reverend Overdor said, the agriculture industry had to look at different ways to do it. And the Evans family and, and, and their, with their properties have, have done a great thing here. And I want to thank the Evans family and, and, and the Citrus folks in this area for their efforts of what they've done too because it's very important that, that, that we do stuff like this. But uh, th th this is an extreme effort and, and it's a great effort and, and we appreciate it. And I want to tell you, we, we appreciate everybody involved in this, not only the South Florida Water Band District, the Department of Environmental Protection, the Agriculture and Community Services people, and all those people that are involved with this. Because being in any River County is, is faced with the same problems as, as our other counties on the, on the Indian River Lagoon. We're faced with a, with a serious problem there. That's a, that's a $7 billion a year uh, uh, generator of income to the to the counties and to the state of Florida. And if we don't make it right and we let it go, we let it go uh, down the tubes further south, whatever uh, you want to use, 
we're in serious trouble as a state and with our with our recreation and with our natural resources. And the fact that 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 the South Florida Water Manager District and the St. John's folks are are heavily involved in this and understand the importance of it, it's very important to us as, as commissioners. In any River County, we're trying to lead the way. We have a few projects going on that, that, that we're proud of, such as the Moorhead Marsh, uh, which is a $10 million project. We're going to use aquatic plants to, uh, to remove the nutrients of the nitrogen and phosphorus from the water, and the St. John's is, is with us in that. Our septic to sewer projects are really important on the Indian River Lagoon, along with some other things we have going on. And also, uh, we're in the process of, of, re, of, of rejuvenating the Lost Tree Islands, which if you were came over Vero Beach and went over the Barber Bridge, you'd see these beautiful islands that we're going to make out of, make recreational parks and move in bases and just do, do more stuff to make the Indian River, Indian River Lagoon a, a, a great place. And also, the, in Indian River County, we're also looking at a, a, a water project to keep water out of the lagoon and actually using some of the property you see here behind me, about three miles away, you know, you have the uh, St. John's Improvement District District Flowway, Spillway, and uh, that water moves into the to the upper St. John's Basin south of Blue Cypress Lake, which is in that direction, and pushes up into St. John's River, as, as, as Commissioner Bernick and the Executive Director Register know very well. And so we're in Indian River County, we're, we're in, the, in the feasibility study project of, of doing a project like that to help make the lagoon better. Thus, going back to what I said earlier, using agriculture property that, that that's no longer being used for agricultural purposes. And again, uh, on behalf of any River County and all our citizens here, again, I'm, I'm sorry we're not at the beach, but for me, I, I love this part of the county. But again, I want to thank uh, I want to thank South Florida Water Management District for doing this project. And and as any River County residents and the commissioner, we really really appreciate it and glad to be a part of it. Thank you very much. Y'all look at me. I, I, I know it's a beautiful view. There's lots of birds, you know, but the, it is incredible. It's, it's really nice to look at. Um, by way of introduction, so these projects intersect the C-25 Canal, uh, and there are 2,000 miles of canals in the South Florida Water Management District, and a lot of our, our objective is to intercept the water in those canals, hold it, treat it, whatever we can do before it gets to our, our ecosystems. And there is a county coalition, the 16 county coalition, that works with the South Florida Water Management District and led legislators to fight for those water resources and make sure we're doing a, a good job trying to protect our water resources and ecosystems. And the chairman of that county coalition is here. He is no stranger in South Florida, Carson Turner. Well, thank you all so much for allowing me the honor to speak here. And, uh, you know, this is this is a day of congratulations to the state of Florida um, to see the governing board here represented to hear about the projects, Ben, that you referenced 43 projects since Governor DeSantis has got engaged in it. Uh, what Representative Overdorf and his team up there in Tallahassee have done to make sure the dollars and cents are flowing is nothing short of amazing. Um, you know, and then the fact that Sean and Libby can order up Chamber of Commerce weather like this, I'll tell you now that that, that deserves a special accolade. But I'll. I want to want to really take time to to tell you from my perspective, being a, a small town boy that lives down there on the southern end of Lake Okeechobee, um, I represent Henry County from a commissioner's perspective, and I get the luxury or the honor also of of working in um, a construction industry that takes me all over this peninsula on the bridges that move up and down, and to say that I have a unique perspective of water is is one thing because I wear another hat that's actually about 37 pounds. I put it on. I have full comms. I can talk, and I get to see literally the bottom of the channels. I was just in. Indian town for six weeks living there on the bascule or excuse me on the center pivot uh, that allows the railroads to go over um, I've, I've dove Main Street downtown Jacks uh, on that the high rise there and you say well how does that correlate it just gives you such an amazing perspective of how this whole system works together uh, governing board member Mead you know Isla Mirada Snake Creek Bridge you know to hear people and to get their understanding of how Florida works and well you know, this, this entity is pitted against entity. This one's uh, not, you know, this one's where the finger needs to be pointed. And if we could just get rid of that, we can fix everything. The reality is we all agree, I think. We have too many rooftops being built. Uh, ben, once again, you'll reference him now for a second time. Too many rooftops being built, too much concrete being poured. But I want you to find a politician 
one like me that says we don't want economic development. Commissioner Hazelleaf and I are doing everything in our powers to bring jobs to our rural. Every day we're trying to make it happen. Um, and at the same time, you know, we're, we're trying to, to work on that tight line of how you make that whole balance go together. And I go back in my mind's eye, and I think back whenever I was allowed to serve on the Water Resource Advisory Council at the district, and I remember a young man that I met uh, was shocked, H.M. Ridgely, uh, and, and oh, uh, Doug Boronique there. They said, guys, this is as plain as the nose on our face. Let's get it done. Now, they didn't say it quite as inarticulate as what I just did, but they said, we have dirt. The Evans family's make it, ready to make it happen. Let's turn and burn on this thing. If, if we can allow the bureaucracy to get out of the way, the pennies on the dollars that we're going to have to spend to be able to do what we see here behind us today, it, it just is cursed with too much logic. Let's make it happen. And, uh, gentlemen, congratulations on what y'all have been able to do. The effort here of St. John's, the Corps of Engineers, FDAX, the District, South Florida Water Management, and that giant governing body, and then the different local commissions, you know, Commissioner, you all coming together. We all have a say in this stuff, and this is where the rubber really meets the road. I'm proud to have been able to at least lobby and beg, borrow, and plead to see stuff like this come together. And uh, once again, I just want to say congratulations to everyone that's within earshot of this, and uh, we need to tell this story because South Florida Water Management District, Y'all are getting it done, and it's it's nothing short of amazing. I mean, you could do a Discovery Channel uh, project on what y'all are doing these last few days. You go down there to C-43, C-44, you just had a ribbon cutting, by the way. Libby, y'all really missed on the weather that day. It was hell. Uh, but but uh, you nailed it here today. And so, once again, uh, I'm echoing myself. Congratulations. And when you say yourself too many times over and over again, you need to leave. So, good job. Thank y'all so much. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, this is the man with the vision, started it, persevered through it, and then persevered some more through it until here we are with the ribbon cutting. Ron Edwards, please share your wisdom. <laughs> thank you, Drew, and thank everyone for showing up here today. Uh, you get to go last, you don't write a speech, you wait and hear what everybody else said, and then you see if, where you fill in the blanks. Um, I, I do want to thank everyone here. Uh, many of you have been actively involved in, in helping us get to this point, and uh, it has taken quite a while, but uh, we're here, and I'm, I'm very proud to be here at this point, and to have this, uh, we had it canceled three or four times, I forget exactly how many, but, but we're here. Thank everyone, and uh, I thank the Evans family for allowing the land and the ideas of, to put this together, to, to, to have water be, a, be part of our strategy for how our company will go forward. And I, Water is a problem in Florida. We got lots of it, but it's not in the right place at the right time, or it's in the wrong place when we don't need it. Uh, we've, we felt this is a, a really good repurposing of a great asset that's in a, in a great place. I mean, I think we all realize this is the headwaters of the St. John's River, right where we're sitting right now, and the Enver runs right around here. This is where this water originally came from. It's the only, the only significant river in the United States that runs north. So all the water that we're taking to Lake Okeechobee and ultimately to the Everglades. Here we're turning around and thinking about sending it north. And it'll go to the tide in Jacksonville instead of in the Indian River Lagoon. In doing that, we are eliminating a whole lot of water that's doing a very bad thing to the lagoon. And it's water that has is totally new. We've lost it forever. When it goes to tide, we never get it back. If we can save it here, this is new water and is figuring out what to do with it and how we should use it best, and that's what the water management districts are for, DEP, the regulations that, that come up. But what we shouldn't do is waste that much water. And even though it took a long time to get here and it took all your help, with lobbying and looking for funds and looking for new ideas about how to accomplish this. I want to tell you that we've been working with the legislature and the governor and the water management districts on a further project that will 
expand and further utilize this exact same property that is currently serving as a water farm to be a full-fledged deep water, 15 foot deep reservoir with an STA that this would be right here that would connect both South Florida and the St. John's water management districts, which this property splits. Half of it is in South Florida and half of it is in St. John's. And it's at the corner of three counties, Okeechobee, St. Lucie, and Indian River. So it's a very unique place and all of the historical feasibility studies says this is where all of the excess water comes together and has the potential to be accessed if you had a place to put it. So our, we've been working for three or four years now with the help of the legislature and funding the initial design and PDE and environmental study of what it would take to build that reservoir here with the STA. And uh, this, this will be a very complicated project that would involve two different water management districts, multiple counties, the DEP, everybody that regulates anything, and, and the Corps of Engineers to, uh, to have a success out of it. But with an open mind and a new way of thinking about something and a, how to figure out how to parcel and use water that no one else has had and we've just been wasting for all this time and will be until we do something like this, I, I want to thank you in advance for accepting the challenge of helping us try to bring this one home too. It'll it'll take a while, but I, it shouldn't it shouldn't take any longer than than we can get it done. It's got to go fast. If we this will be able to have 75,000 acre feet that doesn't go to to uh, tide that would just be setting in that reservoir, being able to be an alternative water source for the CFWI, for South Florida, for wherever the regulators determine that it's be able to be used, but it won't be in the lagoon causing the problems that 75,000 acre feet of water will cause if you don't, if you let it go there. So thank you and thank you in advance for helping us continue this project in the future. Thank you, Ron, and I can tell you, you don't have to sell me or Mike Register or Adam Blaylock on that project. We're, we're all in. It's going to be a good one. All right. It's time to run with scissors. So I need all the speakers and the board members and county commissioners to grab a scissor, and let's meet at the uh, ribbon over here.